to the change up there. Uh, 3 to 4, the difference there is larger, isn't it? It's about 22, but the difference there is big, 9, so probably you do not reject the null. Here, 4 to 5, uh, that's a difference quite big. Here, that's a difference. So let's look at f um, comparing 4 to 5 first. All right, degree of uh, difference, 4 to 5. It's good that I do another one anyway, in case you haven't seen this before. 7, 9, 2, approxim 7, 9, 3 approximately. We don't have to go. Minus... 767, 767, okay, that's 26, take 20, um, so 26, and uh, look at the, let's see, 293, look at the change here, um, so that's 505, let's just do 505 minus 491, All right, that's 14, so the test statistic is 26, so what is the Let's use up arrow so we don't have to type that all the time. What's the critical value say at the 5% level? It's 23. Oh. So here we have evidence here that the smaller model is not adequate. So I model 5 is not adequate relative to 4, so it looks like it's 4. If instead we test it at the um, let's make it more strict. Say at 1% level. Okay, obviously that happens, and then say a weaker ten percent. Okay. Oh, sorry, I typed in the wrong numbers. So if we do it at the one percent level, ninety nine. So if we were do it become well, we're more strict at the one percent level, um, we would not reject the null since it's twenty six is less than twenty nine, but the five percent level we would reject it. In other words, we have uh, evidence, but not very strong evidence against the null. Well, then, because I prefer small models and uh, small models are easy to interpret, um, let's just look at four and five. Then, should we go for four, or should we be more strict and go for f for five? Well, four says that you've got interactions of smoking and sex, interaction of smoking and age, um, sex and age. Whereas model five is saying we've only got an interaction of smoke and weight. In other words that the cell counts, infected cell counts, um, depend on like a combination of uh, smoking and weight. In other words, that um, the response to smoking depends on weight. Whereas these guys, now if you don't believe that age has much to do with it, then you wouldn't go for this Model 4, and you'd be, would just say that the 1% level um, we we kind of um, go for model 5. So let's say we go for model 5, let's become a bit more strict because uh, uh, let's just say that we reckon that age doesn't, you know, have a kind of, a, is a great predictor of, um, I should say the interaction of age with the other ones aren't a great predictor of uh, of this uh, infected cell counts. Okay, I'm not a, I'm not a, in the pharmaceutical or medic, so I've actually no idea. But let's let's kind of I want just want to show you just to simplify this analysis. You might argue with me, but yeah. So let's compare six to five. Um, Eight oh five minus seven nine two, seven nine three say. That's twelve. What's the difference in the uh, degree of change in degree of freedom? Five oh seven. Oh, I could you could obviously you can do this in your head, but let's see. Uh, two. Okay, so we already got the critical value at the chi square at five percent level. That's six, at two degree of freedom. Uh, Twelve exceeds six, so you definitely reject. Um, and at the one percent level, let's be strict here and let's just the one percent level. It's nine. You still reject. All right. So for sure, then this is saying that you would not reject mol five in favor of reject of mol six. So we stick with mol 5. So this mol 5 then, if we look at it, is saying that we have interaction of smoker and weight. And the, uh, and the meaning of the interaction term is that this uh, infected number of infected cells on the slide um, depends on a combination of smoking and weight. And you, that's because you could say that smoking uh, depends on body weight. 
I, the, sorry, the response to smoking depends on body weight as well. That's to say that the response, um, if the person smokes, the response um, could be higher or lower depending on the body weight as well. So you could have a, somebody who's smoking and whose body weight, let's say, is uh, obese, could be much different to the response from a smoker whose body weight is normal. That's what I mean by interaction. Right, so model 5 wins, so what's my story next? So ne next we can go on to interpret the coefficient. Well, first of all, let's look at the model we've got. Okay, I've just renamed this to model so it makes more sense than R2M1. Here you go. So we've got these coefficients. Now, because these are factors, what we have are indicator variables, otherwise known as dummy variables. So smoker, remember that, you either that came into two types, smoking, yes or no, true or false. So the coefficient here, smoker true, means that this is a dummy variable equal 1 if you're a smoker, 0 otherwise. So um, non-smoker has been left out, so non-smoker is the reference category. Just to stand back a bit, remember that for factor, that is say k number of categories, we set up k minus 1 dummies or k minus 1 indicator variables. Smoker, you have two categories. You smoke or you don't smoke. So we set one, set up one dummy variable. And the other thing that's left out is called the reference, is the reference category. So the non-smoker is the reference. Weight, remember that came into three as well. There was uh, obese, overweight, and normal. You can see we've got three categories, so we leave out one and setting up two dummies. And uh, what we've got is obese and over. So it means that coded 1 if the person's obese, 0 otherwise, and 1 if the person's overweight and 0 otherwise for this one. Normal has been left out, so each of these coefficients are comparing this group to the normal group. And finally, you've got the uh, interactions, which you've only got two here because uh, smoking false has been is a reference category that's been left out, as uh, and for weight, normal has been left out. Now in terms of um, interpret these coefficients, um, I can do that, but it's actually easier to see the results in a in a t in a table of means. So I did think of explaining the coefficients to you, but I think it's actually um, let's keep things simple. Let's keep things simple. Let's look at the uh, means. So what I've got here is uh, with this. Um, data frame I'm going to apply to the table or uh, to the uh, to the variable cells and I'm going to list it by smoking and weight and we want the mean over smoking and weight here all right so according to the model this is the table that explains helps to explain the uh, mean cell counts of uh, of, uh, of the infected cells and it's saying that it depends on whether you smoke and your weight, right? And the interaction terms means that the response depends uh, over different levels of smoking and weight. What now? Let's explain a bit more what that means. For example, for a person that is normal weight, whether you smoke or not, the difference there is approximately. this all right uh, let's just point what these numbers mean anyway um, so 0.42 here means that that's about the uh, mean uh, cell number of infected cells on the slide if that person is not uh, normal weight and doesn't smoke what's the biggest number here as here so this number here is interpreted 3.51 is interpreted as the mean number of infected cells on the slide given that you have an individual who is obese and smokes. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Now, to explain the interaction. Interaction. So, say that this person is a normal weight. Then we can say that if the person smokes, it's got an increases the, the mean cell count by about 0.54. Now, if there's no interaction, then the difference between over 
the uh, the mean cell counts for smoking and non-smoking should be the same irrespective of the weight. That is what it would mean to say that there is no interaction. All right, but if we look at obese, 0.6, oh, sorry, 3.51 approximately. Um, doing it approximately because you can quite see quite clear it's going to be bigger than 0.54. There you go. You see that's way different. And if and uh, but we would expect them to be the same approximately e even if there's no interaction. And finally for the over, let's just do that as well. Two points about two minus half is one. So they're all different, right? And that that's why you have that interaction. You know, so in a lot of the modeling cases, um, medical sciences as well, that uh, we are mainly interested in these interaction effects. So what this says overall is that for an obese person, that the impact of smoking is going to contribute greatest to the uh, number of uh, infected cells, isn't it, uh, compared to normal, which gives you least increase, and overweight gives you the second uh, largest increase. So if a person, if I put it another way, I try to make it as simple as possible, I'll try to express this in layman terms, which is, that's just a challenge, is to say that somebody of normal weight, if that person smokes, contribution of that smoking is not as great as if that person is overweight and smokes. It's going to have a more detrimental effect if that person smokes and is overweight in terms of increasing the number of um, infected cell counts. Whatever the infection is, um, I don't know. Right, um, with any table like this, we can also look at the bar charts. So obviously for presentation purposes, this is kind of, this is what we kind of want to show people because people understand charts. Right, I'm going to kind of recap bar, bar, bar plots, bar charts um, very quickly here. So uh, what I've done here, and it explains early why I did call this tab. Um, I didn't have to type this, in fact the first time I attempted this I just omitted that, just write that. If you just write with and all that stuff you give given the table. But why I called it tab is because here if I didn't put write tab it saves me typing that whole thing again putting it into here. Alright so basically in terms of like a math speak I'm substituting all that into here. So I'm just calling it tab, substitute that in. Let's see what that looks like. Here is what it looks like. So we've got um, groups here, uh, weight, not being normal, obese and over, and the bars here represent the uh, mean cell counts, and a different colour represents whether you are a smoker, yes or no. Uh, so for the first one, normal, you can see that doesn't smoke, it's about 0.41, so this and this is the dark, dense colour, and then you add on top of that, if it smokes is 0.95, add that onto that, and that's why you get approximately over, you get over one, right? Um, now this is, we can make it look nice and this, I'm just showing you what would happen if you just looked at the, you just type this in the simplest one possible, want to get a nicer one than that. So we want to kind of rearrange it by kind of groups, smoker and non-smoker. I get these things, so what we use there is the beside equal T for true. Now if you do that, now this is much better, isn't it? Now you can kind of see, juxtaposed to each other, smoking, that's the impact, that's the difference. But obese the difference is huge, and that's what I was saying. Whereas the difference here is second. So first biggest difference, second biggest difference, third biggest difference. And that is why you have an interaction. If there's no interaction, then you'd expect the differences here to be the same across all groups. Alright? So say that's the height, that'd be the same height here somehow, that'd be the same height here somehow. We can make it look look, look better still. Basically, we've done hard work now. I'm just kind of relaxing with this picture. Um, we're going to do a presentation. We're going to submit a journal or something. We want to add some. We don't want to add color to the charts because for a journal, you just want shading. So it's how you do it. Color, not applicable. A density, choose whatever numbers you like. Play out these numbers. They will give you kind of different kinds of shading. Okay, so here's what we have okay, in terms of shading. Just change those numbers uh, instead of 10 and 20, do 30, 40, whatever you like. All right, or look up uh, what those numbers actually mean. And then we can add a legend to that afterwards. I'm going to do that now. That's just basically um, a box next to the thing. I'll just show you what this is going to what this says. 
Oh, let's just run it first so you can see what happens. Okay, this is what's happened. That box is that's the legend. Uh, and how you understand it is like this: legend. Where do you position the legend? Uh, how uh, far along the x-axis? One, two, or three. So I'm doing it one. And height. What's the height you want it at? I want a height of 3.5, so it touches 3.5, okay? So if you change that height to, you play about with the code, um, it's on my website, you know, change it to something like 1.5, it should come down here somewhere, all right? And then we want, uh, this is how it's going to be labeled, non-smoker and smoker, non-smoker and smoker. And then what you want is that color, you don't want color. Uh, the density you've got to put in again, you just got to kind of have it so that it matches up with the density you had for the charts earlier on, so I have matched them, okay? So that's it. Um, that is a Poisson model with interaction effects, and interaction effects are the kind of things that we're after because they're, they're kind of interesting interpretations. And um, but how do you come up with the f with this final model that you're going to kind of interpret? Uh, you can start with the a model with the all the interactions, and then just start knocking, um, getting rid of them one by one. When I say getting rid of them, I say it very cavalier fashion. But basically, you run a whole load of models. Um, one, uh, each one smaller than the last, and then you uh, compare the deviances. You run a formal chi-square test comparing the deviances, and that's how you reach your final model. Um, could you build up instead of down? Well, wh why not? Because you know you still got that same sequence, and uh, you can still compare you can still compare the deviances in the same way. The final thing to add is that all throughout I ran it with uh, quasi um, MLE, so using the quasi Poisson. Um, command uh, that uh, controls for the fact that the um, assumption of the Poisson regression that the uh, variance equals the mean is not uh, satisfied, and that's usually the case that's reported um, by by uh, applied um, statisticians. It's not usually uh, satisfied. We have over dispersion because the variance exceeds the mean, and so we use the uh, quasi Poisson to correct for the fact that the standard errors would be wrong otherwise. Okay, well that's a uh, that's really that's really about it for this example. All right, hope that's helped. Bye.